Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel and Mexico sign a series of bilateral agreements, which Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu declares will provide a promise of hope and prosperity to many peoples. The IDF has concluded its 10 days exercise in the north of Israel, the largest military exercise conducted by the Israeli military in the past 19 years. The United States announces a decision to extend sanctions relief for Iran under the 2015 nuclear agreement. It stresses that no decision on whether to preserve the deal itself has yet been made. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, who is on an official state visit in Mexico as part of a regional tour, met with Mexican President Enrique Pena Nieto at his presidential palace in Mexico City, during which the two leaders discussed bilateral relations and their joint aspiration of elevating cooperation in various sectors of economy. In a special televised ceremony, the two leaders signed a series of bilateral agreements, after which President Penanito declared that his country had accepted Israel's offer to help in a joint effort by Mexico and the United States to develop Central America, while adding that Mexico City and Jerusalem had also agreed to update their free trade agreement, which was signed in the year 2000. Quiero en primer lugar darle la más cordial de las bienvenidas al señor primer ministro de Israel, Benjamín Netanyahu. Lo primero que quiero compartirles es que a través del diálogo político que hoy tenemos del más alto nivel, nos abre espacio para trabajar en distintos frentes eh, que hemos acordado. El primero de ellos es actualizar el acuerdo de libre comercio que tenemos celebrado entre Israel y México. Un acuerdo que fue firmado en el año 2000 y que hoy coincidimos merece ser modernizado y actualizado. Prime Minister Netanyahu declared during their joint press conference that the future belongs to those who innovate, while stressing that the growing cooperation between Mexico and Israel would provide a promise of hope and prosperity to many peoples. Israel is known as the innovation nation. We believe that through our partnership we can uh, bring the fruits of this innovation to the people of Mexico uh, and to many others to cooperate, in fact, as you said, uh, in Central America as we agreed. I think this uh, gives a promise of hope uh, and prosperity to many, many peoples. And there are already 150 Israeli companies investing uh, and uh, working in Mexico. Uh, we would like to see uh, Mexican companies coming and investing in Israel. In fact. Netanyahu's trip to Mexico marked the first visit to the Central American country by an acting Israeli prime minister. Even though relations between the two nations were strained earlier this year by a tweet in which Netanyahu appeared to praise U.S. President Donald Trump's plans to build a wall on the Mexican border, both leaders voiced their strong appreciation of each other and said they would hold additional meetings next year in Jerusalem. Now back to Israel, where the IDF has concluded its 10 days exercise in the north of the country, the largest military exercise conducted by the Israeli military in the past 19 years. The IDF said that tens of thousands of soldiers participated in the exercise, drilling defensive capabilities, firepower, intelligence, and maneuvering in several sectors simultaneously and over time. Along with this, the IDF general staff simulated a variety of multi-front scenarios. Following summaries of the exercise, the top IDF brass voiced confidence that in a scenario of a war with Israel's northern neighbor Lebanon, despite the foreseeable harm to Israel's home front, the IDF would defeat the Iranian proxy Hezbollah in a clear, discernible and significant victory within a short time. That said, senior IDF officers noted that they are fully aware that the other side has also improved its fighting capabilities. The Lebanese militia Hezbollah has been engaged in warfare in Syria, and in the past three years it has changed the nature of its activity from a guerrilla organization to a fighting army that operates within military frameworks and uses artillery, relatively high-precision missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles and more. 
Nevertheless, IDF officers emphasized that the qualitative edge that Israel has developed over Hezbollah since the Second Lebanon War of 2006 is much greater than the improvement in Hezbollah's military capabilities. Now to Egypt, where the Al Khayat daily reported that Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el Sisi ordered expedited preparations for the Rafa border crossing to the Gaza Strip to be opened. The report cited Palestinian sources who said that Egyptian Intelligence Director General Khaled Fawzi informed members of Hamas delegation of the decision. The report noted that Egypt intends to open the crossing twice a week in order to provide relief for the residents of the Palestinian enclave and to tackle the humanitarian crisis of the Gaza Strip while still taking the security situation in the Sinai Peninsula into consideration. The report further stated that Hamas political bureau member Rauhi Mushtaha would serve as the director of Hamas's permanent mission to Cairo and that he would serve as a direct channel between Egypt and Hamas. Now, with regard to the Islamic Republic of Iran, the United States announced a decision to extend sanctions relief for Iran under the 2015 nuclear agreement. It stressed that no decision on whether to preserve the deal itself has yet been made. Uh, Matt, the administration did approve waivers in order to maintain some flexibility as we support on Capitol Hill and among allies and partners to address the flaws in the JCPOA and additional time to develop our policy to address the full range of Iranian malign behavior. Now, waiving some of those sanctions should not be seen as an indication of President Trump or his administration's position on the JCPOA, nor is the waiver giving the Iranian regime a pass on its broad range of malign behavior. Again, no decisions have been made on uh, the final JCPOA. We still have some time for that. Under the nuclear deal and a related U.S. law, the President of the United States must inform Congress every 90 days whether the Islamic Republic is complying with its obligations under the agreement, in which Iran agreed to roll back its nuclear program in exchange for billions of dollars in sanctions relief. The Trump administration has already faced two of the 90-day deadlines and both times avoided scrapping the agreement, stating that Iran was meeting the conditions needed to keep enjoying sanctions relief. Once again, even though President Trump has said he does not expect to certify Iran's compliance again, the decision by the American leader will provide the Islamic Republic with continued sanctions relief. Nevertheless, the spokeswoman for the U.S. State Department stressed that Washington continues to view the JCPOA as flawed and will continue to evaluate its policy toward Iran in totality. Uh, there are a lot of things that the JCPOA does not handle, does not mention, and that is a concern of this administration um, that we feel is important to highlight. There have been uh, many years in the past in which you didn't hear a lot about the bad things that Iran has done. Um, many would argue that since the JCPOA was, uh, was signed, and I'm not making the JCPOA responsible for this, but Iran has upped its bad behavior in many instances. We've seen the harassment of our sailors. We've seen what they've done in Syria. We've seen Hezbollah going into Syria, causing more problems. We've seen Iran uh, continuing to supply weapons to uh, other fighting forces. They are doing a whole lot of bad things, and I think it's always worth reminding uh, the American public, folks watching, folks listening, folks who read your newspapers and publications, exactly why we are here at this point, exactly why there are concerns about the JCPOA, and why we're looking at our Iran policy in totality. Because the fact of the matter is, Iran is about a lot more, the Iranian government, I should say, is about a lot more than this nuclear program. They're doing a lot of bad things, and we want to address and highlight those things. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.